Welcome to this MOOC. My name is Petra Hellegers. I'm the Professor of Water Resources Management at Wageningen University. In this MOOC, I will explain the role of water productivity assessment and trade-off analysis of different development strategies. This is the structure of the MOOC. First, I will uh, repeat several definitions of water productivity. Then I will explain how to calculate water productivity. I will explain the difference between private and social benefits of water. Then I will explain the need for an assessment framework with several indicators to make trade-offs uh, between indicators explicit. And I will showcase the assessment framework on the basis of the example of Egypt. There are several definitions of water productivity. The biophysical crop water productivity is often defined as crop yield per unit of water consumed. Whereas the economic water productivity, or the value of water, is often defined as the net private benefits per unit of water consumed. Whereas the socio-economic water productivity is often defined as the net social benefits per unit of water consumed. And I say water consumed instead of water applied because that water which is consumed is no longer available for other users. The biophysical crop water productivity can be calculated by defining crop yield by water consumed. To calculate the economic water productivity, the residual value can be used. Well, we multiply crop yield with the farm gate price, market price for the crops received, minus the cost of the other inputs. What is left, the residual, can be seen as the value of water. Society has several societal objectives that need to be considered from a social point of view, such as equity, poverty alleviation, but also uh, generating economic growth, sustainable use of water, and rural development. And it's therefore important to make a distinction between the private and the social value of water. Water for stable crops has, for instance, a low private financial value, whereas it has a high socio-economic value because it's important for stability, for instance. Higher wheat prices in the past have triggered revolutions, such as during the Arab Spring. It can cause instability, so therefore it has a high socio-economic value. Whereas if you would look only at the financial value, that's rather low. This difference between the private and social value of water shows already that there are different indicators and there might be trade-offs between indicators, but there are even more indicators like land productivity, environmental sustainability, equity, but also food self-sufficiency. So we need an uh, assessment framework to provide insight in the trade-offs between the diff different indicators. To make conscious and informed policy decisions, it's important to reveal the trade-offs between indicators for different development strategies. Here you see a set of indicators with their explanations, but you could add indicators to the assessment framework. It's also important to mention that the scoring is relative between the different development strategies and the argumentation is open for discussions in policy dialogues. Let me now showcase the assessment framework on the basis of the example of Egypt. Egypt has two development strategies. The first one is the horizontal expansion, where they will expand the area of land cropped, and the other one is the vertical expansion, where they will increase crop productivity per area of land. As you can see, they score differently in our assessment framework. The dashed grey line is the horizontal expansion, whereas the solid black line is the vertical expansion. And as you can see, in the case of horizontal expansion, it scores higher on water productivity, employment and food security, whereas the vertical expansion scores higher on land productivity and 
food self-sufficiency and environmental sustainability. And of course, this is open for discussion. But it shows the trade-offs between the different development strategies. To conclude, I've shown in this MOOC that there is a difference between the private and the social value of water. And that it's therefore important to make trade-offs between such indicators explicit. And that the assessment framework can be very helpful in this respect. Finally, I would like to mention that the choice for the preferred development strategy remains political in nature. And I would like to thank you very much for your attention.